Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Alay Patel from NVIDIA, and today I want to share our experience of uh, upgrading Qbert uh, in production. Upgrading a complex component like uh, Qbert can sometimes seem like a daunting task, but it is essential to um, get the latest improvement and features um, in Qbert. So uh, I want to share some of our experiences, our upgrade plans, some key challenges that we hit, and what are we doing to make uh, upgrade smoother, uh, upgrade experience smoother uh, for Qbert users. Before talking about um, the upgrade, I want to give a quick overview of the data center setup that we have here. So we manage a fleet of cl Kubernetes clusters that are deployed uh, worldwide uh, on bare metal hosts. Kubert is one of the core components uh, on those clusters that expose uh, gaming workloads uh, to users. Clusters are generally divided into groups of dev, stage, uh, QE, and production environments. Our plan was to roll out uh, Kubert upgrades with the least amount of uh, downtime. With, uh, with complex system like Kubert and Kubernetes, it is really essential to have a crisp update plan as well as centralized tooling to make sure updates uh, can go through without downtime. As one would expect, we have uh, our own set of in-house tooling. It is based on uh, Flux. Flux is an open source project that allows managing Kubernetes applications in um, GitOps style. So basically, uh, we have a Git repository that is monitored by Flux, which then syncs all the uh, updates uh, inside of a Kubernetes cluster. So we used uh, Flux as a tool uh, to push our upgrades into, uh, or the desired upgrades into uh, Git, and then it has had rolled out uh, into, um, in, into the data centers. So with tooling out of the way, I wanted to talk a little bit about what our upgrade plan looked like. If you divide the total upgrade plan into key phases, these three phases come to mind. First, uh, getting all of the internal forks and um, code bases ready for the upgrade. We have a customized deployment of Qbert, so getting all of the components ready is essential. The second phase is testing those, uh, those components and actually checking how the upgrade goes. And once we are ready to roll, roll out the upgrade, the third phase is actually uh, triggering the flux, flux deployment through the layers of, of the stacks with enough stock, soak, soak time. So with that upgrade plan, I would like to dig a little bit into each of these phases and share our experience um, as to how we did. So phase one, this is getting the internal fork and all of the core components ready for the Qbert upgrade. Uh, this phase involved in going through uh, lots of the release notes and identifying the key changes that were coming in. So for us, there were three key changes that um, we ended up spending a, a lot of time in. Qbert um, changed the way uh, in which uh, libvirt was built, a custom uh, image of libvirt was built. Uh, we were upgrading from version 0 0.350 to 0 0.50. So the version skew was large and there were a lot of changes coming in. The Qbert uh, custom image was built by was now built by a, a tool called Basel DNF. Uh, overall, we needed to um, get used to this tool and change the um, CI and our own internal tooling to make sure we we are able to build uh, Libvirt images after the upgrade. The experience of um, porting into this tool was um, good. We did not have any hiccups there. The second key change was uh, refactoring the device plugin. Uh, Qbert community changed um, the uh, interface in which uh, device plugins talk to Bart Handler. Uh, we had implemented our own um, set of device plugins and we needed to change that uh, for the GPUs. 
The third key change was uh, upgrading keyword clients for all the related components. So we have some customized components like the cloud init sidecar, the QCOW2 sidecar, external VMI uh, mutator webhook. All of these needed to be upgraded with the uh, new API of 0.50 version. Um, and, and so that the client is able to talk to the Word API server. Overall, this phase, um, in this phase, we expected a lot of changes because uh, the version skew was large and this went relatively smoothly for us. The second phase is where things started to get uh, interesting. Um, this phase is where when our code was ready and the uh, images were built and we were ready to test out um, the upgrade. This phase involved uh, two things, manual testing and uh, making sure that the upgrade is going uh, without any disruption. And second, uh, automated regression uh, testing so we can get some kind of uh, confidence that yes, the upgrade will go through the uh, production layers uh, without disruption. So in order to, before diving into some of the challenges uh, we faced in this phase, I would like to share the upgrade path that mm, uh, that Kubert takes. So when a user or a tool decide, when a user decides to upgrade, they manually patch the upgrade uh, to the vault operator deployment or a tool does it. But once the operator deployment is uh, patched with the upgrade, the vault operator rolls this upgrade out in a specific order. It will first uh, upgrade the daemon sets. So all the um, vault handler uh, no, all the word handler pods in the nodes will get this update. Then it will update the uh, controllers. So word controller will, will be updated next. And finally, the API server um, will be uh, upgraded to bring in uh, the, the latest API server. So this order is important and this leads us to our first uh, challenge. As you can see in the picture that um, that because operator uh, upgraded the word handler first, the word handler had the newer clients which read the API from version 0 0.50, while the API server was still serving uh, from old API version, which was from 0 0.35. Uh, because of this, new clients, um, had to read data presented from the old API server. And you can see in the image below that it was, it errored out in unmarshalling the data provided by the um, old API server. So this was, um, this was problematic because the specific error handling part in word handler led to running VMIs being pushed into failed state. So what ended up happening is right after the upgrade, all the VMIs were being put into a failed state. As we dug more into the issue, we identified that this was happening in a specific code path where the new clients were not able to decode the or unmarshal the, the JSON. And because of that, um, the fix that was identified was to continue the VMI, uh, to let the VMI continue in, in the same phase uh, right after the upgrade. Uh, once the upgrade came in and both the API server as well as the uh, clients were talking the same version, that is 0 0.50, we would remove this temporary patch and make sure that the upgrade goes to. So we were successful in, uh, in attempting this patch uh, and we were able to execute uh, no disruption uh, on our upgrades. This leads to the second uh, challenge uh, that we faced. This was, uh, this was in the cloud init uh, config uh, drive uh, feature. Cloud init uh, is, a, is an open source project which is used for initializing uh, virtual machines. KubeWord supports a cloud init via two uh, different configuration options. So one is the 
cloud init config drive a volume source. The other is the cloud init uh, no cloud volume source. Both of these uh, config configuration options um, are similar, but in in the no cloud metadata, the configuration is read from VMI spec, whereas in the config drive metadata, it is read from the secrets. And in, in both of these, what ends up happening is Kubert reads, uh, Kubert reads certain data presented by the user called user data as well as network data. And it also generates um, metadata. Um, then when it has these sets of data, it will present it inside of a VM via JSON encoding um, through, through separate files. Um, as disks on the VM. What, what can happen is the virtual machine images can then read those metadata and um, boot up the VM successfully. So for example, if the VMI is um, tracking some kind of monitoring changes for, for the instance ID, it could look at the instance ID metadata populated by Kubert. So what we observed is that after uh, upgrading, we, we started seeing a lot of boot failures in, uh, in our stack. You can see some of the images um, below that there were two major causes for, uh, for failures. One of them is named software installation. And also in the, um, in the image below, you can see the, that it is the VMI is complaining to um, read the metadata value for which uh, the, the key is not present. So after digging more into this, we found um, what ended up happening in the upgrade is that the JSON tags for, the, uh, for this metadata, which was encoded inside the VM um, changed. The applications were not um, able to read this JSON anymore. And because they were not able to read the JSON uh, objects, they started going into the failed state. So we found out that um, this was uh, due to the upgrade um, and this was due to uh, metadata.json file not being uh, in a specific format. The fix was for us to introduce uh, patches to bring these old, old fields back we, we were not able, we could not afford um, to let the application teams uh, handle this upgrade because um, the amount of uh, application teams is, is large and it would really um, push back the upgrade cycles. Um, so we ended up um, having our own patches um, to handle this issue. Currently, we are uh, discussing this uh, with the community as to how best uh, to process or proceed up forward. This leads us to the uh, next challenge, um, which is um, failures in uh, vGPU um, VMI boot up. So right after the upgrade, um, you know, taking a step back, there are certain VMIs in our uh, data center, which, which run uh, on vGPU slices through MDEV devices. After the upgrade, we started seeing reports of uh, these VMIs with vGPUs running into uh, some kind of uh, driver error. As you can see in, uh, in the image, it's a code 12 driver error. Uh, which says that the GPU was not the GPU driver was not um, able to to be installed in the VMI. So to dig into this, we started um, tracking the changes in the vGPU drivers. Um, there were no changes um, on that side of things. We also looked for any um, any changes in the host OS where these um, VMIs were running. Uh, we were not able to identify any changes um, there as well. So this pointed to um, the KubeWord upgrade um, and we kind of isolated the changes in the KubeWord upgrade um, that were going through, uh, that were leading to this error. 
So after trying a bunch of things, we compared the dump XML of the VMIs um, that were created before and after the upgrade. And on the diff, we found that a couple of options were introduced um, in, in this uh, upgrade. Those were, as you can see in the picture, display equals to on and RAM FB equals to on. After digging more into this, um, there were two fields that were introduced in uh, Kubeword, which for vGPUs de defaulted to true. Those, those, those are the virtual GPU options and the display and RAM FB are fields in, in the, the VMI spec. So after trial and error, we found out that if we restored the, the fields back to um, libvirt defaults, which are false, um, the code 12 errors you see on the left um, picture um, goes away. So in order to fix this, we configured the system defaults in our stack um, to uh, those that were uh, before the upgrades. So with no display and no RAM FB. With that, we were able to successfully uh, boot up um, VMIs with uh, vGPU and um, move ahead in this uh, upgrade. So those were the two, those were the um, three key challenges we faced in phase two. Um, if we take a step back, these represent um, three different areas. Um, one was um, API break, other was um, the cloud init metadata, which is not really a KubeWord API, but a applications inside the VM depend on, on that uh, API. And the third was a uh, behavioral change uh, and the default change. So once we were ready, um, we had some uh, regression testing and um, we were comfortable in pushing these upgrades forward. Um, we used, we relied on the Flux-based tool to start to roll out the upgrade. Again, um, just to recap, the upgrade path uh, looked like uh, an automation tool applying upgrade patch to the word operator and then cube word operator um, upgrading different components in a specific and definite order. So we started rolling out upgrade in a way that we have enough soap time in each of the, um, the layers or the group of clusters so that if any problems were identified even after these kinds of testing, we can catch them first um, in, in dev and QE environments. After rolling out the upgrade, we found that KubeWord itself, um, the, the modified KubeWord that we have was itself being non-disruptive, but sometimes uh, the rollout was stuck at uh, daemon sets or the word handler uh, daemon sets. So after digging more, um, it turned out that uh, in, in a large cluster, you could, we had some nodes which were in ready state, but word handler was not able to come up on, on that node for some reason. Because word handler pod was not able to come up uh, on that node, the daemon set rollout was stuck. And because the daemon set rollout was stuck, entire cube word uh, upgrade was stuck there. So a manual intervention was needed. Uh, the fix or the hack we, we did was um, to remove the, the labels on those nodes so that word handler daemon set no longer schedules a pod on, the, on that node. This uh, unblocked the daemon set and moved the uh, update, uh, moved the upgrade forward. Once the daemon set um, upgrade was successful, the word operator had no problems in upgrading um, uh, word controller and word API. So with this, we, is successfully rolled out uh, the upgrade. It was um, it was a large effort, but we were able to make sure that the upgrade was itself uh, non-disruptive after um, thorough testing and, and having that upgrade plan. 
So moving forward, um, I want to highlight some of the um, changes or, or conversations we are having with the community to make sure that the upgrade experience is uh, improved. The first thing um, Kubert decided, um, Kubert now follows um, uh, Kubernetes release cadence. So we strongly believe that um, slowing down the, the release cycle now that Kubert has reached, reached certain production level uh, will really help uh, vendors and, and developers um, you know, be more ready, will help vendors be more ready to, to be um, you know, on top of the upgrades and will make, will help uh, the developers, um, you know, uh, roll out more uh, stable releases with, with the 15 week um, release cadence. Then um, there are some discussions that um, we are driving on um, having some kind of a policy so that um, API versions and um, feature behaviors can be, um, you know, deprecated as well as API breakages can be um, supported. Um, we are also looking at having test coverages for upgrades um, as well as, um, you know, trying to um, have conversation with uh, upstream Kubernetes to fix these daemon set um, rollout issues. There is a potential for collaboration there. So to conclude, um, I wanted to um, I wanted to share our experiences of upgrading Kubeboard. Um, the version skew was large, so we kind of anticipated some of the problems there. But hopefully, this gives uh, data points um, to the community um, and to the users who are planning to upgrade um, their Kubeboard um, in the future. Thanks, thanks again for the um, thanks to the community um, to you know um, give out um, such um, production ready uh, project, and um, we love I, we look forward to continue uh, working in, in in here. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, and you have a few questions. Um, sure. One is Alexander wants to know why upgrade such a large version diff? You know, from three eight to five zero. We, sure. uh, we ensure upgrades work between versions. Did you consider multiple upgrade steps, you know, to upgrade to some intermediate versions um, uh, where, for example, the upgrade from 3.8 to 4.3 would cover some of the issues you found? Sure. So um, we, we were an early adopter of uh, KubeWord and kind of uh, our fleet was, um, was at large scale. So um upgrading um into in smaller versions um after that initial uh, deployment um we found it a little bit hard um so we wanted to make sure that after 335 three, we were at 50 which is more closer to um the latest version um and from there on um take next steps uh, in our upgrade so Moving forward, um, the next upgrade is going to be with uh, 0 0.59, which again brings us closer. And hopefully with um, the re um, larger release cadence of KubeWord, we, we, were, we would be able to be more uh, aligned with uh, upstream in terms of our upgrades. Cool, thanks. Uh, Lubislav wants to know, um, do you use downgrades? Um, have you had any experience with downgrades? Um, no, unfortunately, um, I mean, fortunately, we, once we decided to upgrade, um, we were able to get to a point where uh, upgrades uh, were not disruptive. So we did not have to kind of, uh, you know, stop it halfway through and then downgrade. Um, really, in, in my experience so far, the only, um, place where I would look at a downgrade is if if something is broken um, during the upgrade and if I'm not going if I'm not able to move forward with the upgrade that's when I would consider a downgrade downgrade we have not hit that issue um, and we don't have any experience with, with downgrades yet 
Cool. Okay. Um, uh, he also wants to know, are there other things that Cooper could do to improve uh, upgrades and make them smoother? Yeah. Um, so, um, so there are some, <clears throat> some inspiration in uh, Kubernetes where uh, they have um, more extensive coverage on uh, API marshalling and unmarshalling. Um, so for example, there are unit tests where uh, previous versions of uh, API objects are marshaled by the current um, version in master. Um, that is one thing um, I, we are looking at um, as a low hanging fruit to make sure that at an API layer, API layer upgrades are smooth. Once the API is covered, then there is a case of um, behavior functionality. Um, and that is much more challenging because there we would need much more um, complex tests. So in, to conclude, I think there are two um, ways we can improve the upgrade experience. First have um, uh, unit tests so that API breakages can be detected before the release. Um, these, this is kind of the low hanging fruit and one much more long term, which is uh, to have to have behavioral uh, tests, for example, word handler with older release working with uh, word API at the newer release and still behaving uh, correctly as expected. So those are the two things, in my opinion, that would really help with the upgrades. Okay, Daniel wants to know, um, are you allowed to share the approximate number of uh, Kubert installs that you have, since you were mentioning that there were a bunch of different application teams? Um, so we don't have uh, Kubert installs uh, in terms of like each independent uh, application team having their own version of uh, Kubert. What we have is um, centralized infrastructure and then um, application teams creating uh, images for that infrastructure in their, uh, in their own way. Um, unfortunately, I don't know, I don't have an approximate of uh, how many teams are involved there. Okay, um, uh, one other question about, did you try things? Um, I uh, did you try rollbacks, um, uh, rolling back to the original version, and if so, um, how did that work? No, we as as I said, um, our intent was to make sure that um, the upgrade goes through. We really want to be um, aligned with um, the latest, uh, well, uh, the closer ver like latest versions of Kubeworld. So we pushed really hard to make sure that 0 0.50 version goes through successfully and we were able to execute on that. We did not um, uh, have, like we did not run into a scenario where things went so bad that we had to roll back. Okay, well, thank you very much. And we're at time. So if folks have further questions for LA, um, ask them in the general chat.